Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we have another, uh, what's it called, Reddit thread that uh, has gotten a lot of uh, attention lately. So I thought, why not? Let's do a video on it. I'm going to give my opinion of it, and we're going to go from there. Like always, I'm going to link it down below, and uh, it's pretty lengthy. So uh, let's get right to it. And what I'm going to be doing in this one, just so you guys don't get confused, I'm going to be reading it. I'm going to give my opinion, and I'm also going to give, like, if he states that, you know, he wants something to be added in, I'm going to give, um, you know, knowledge that I have or, you know, stuff that I have seen on the forums because at this point I have read a lot about the, I've read a lot of dev replies from the forum. So I do have some information if it does pop up in here, but uh, let's get right to it. All right. So the title is making Bandlord factions feel unique. Okay. And then he says, I'm curious to hear everyone's ideas on how to make the factions play unique. Something beyond a simple flat numeric bonus and different troops to add variety depending upon your faction. Just spitballing, but reading through the lore of the world, these ideas came to my mind. So I did make a video, uh, what's it called? Not recently, probably like a month ago, maybe two, I have no idea when actually. Around that time frame where I, de where I decided to like think of my own uh, cultural bonuses or kingdom bonuses or faction bonuses, whatever you want to call it. And instead of just doing one or two for each, I made it like a list for each uh, faction. And each faction has its bonuses, has its downfalls. And, you know, kind of like, you know, I tried to make it as, uh, what do you call it? I was about to say lore friendly, but in a way, lore friendly. So like whenever, so because like each, each, each faction is like, what do you call it? There's like speculations and there's also like, uh, some uh, descriptions that kind of like describe it as it's supposed to mirror this actual uh, What do you call it? Kingdom or civilization that we had back in the day, right? So I try to like read read those about those about that lore and then kind of um, What's it called? Make the bonuses based on that. So it kind of made more sense uh, You guys did like my ideas. So we're gonna see if uh, any of those ideas show up over here. All right, so he's just gonna go right into it. So we're gonna start with Empire first and go down uh, the list. So Empire, we got three bullet notes. All right, so first one. The three Imperial factions should be a playthrough of political intrigue. Open conflict between the three factions should be rare. Lords of the uh, Imperial factions should be scheming to draw other Lords on their side internally while fending off assaults from non-Imperial factions. It would be cool Okay, so first of all, the whole it should be a playthrough of itself. Uh, the game is going kind of for a sandbox mode, so there's not going to be like predetermined playthroughs, if that kind of makes sense. Right now, we have like a main storyline, but sandbox mode is coming very soon to the game, where pretty much you start off, uh, whatever faction you choose, you will just spawn in that area, and um, you know, not really a story there. You make the story yourself, right? But uh, I do like the idea of, uh, what do you call it? You know, uh, the three uh, Imperial factions not actually fighting uh, one another until maybe later on. I think that would be kind of cool. kind of be a, a different, uh, what do you call it? But obviously that goes back to alliances. And I don't know where the devs are when it comes to alliances, but yeah, we're going to have to see what they do with that. But it would be a cool concept if they would kind of stick together more. Then we have the Empire has a history of bribes and assassinations. Bribes should change hands often so that the Lords flip-flop between the three factions often. Political maneuvering and change alliances should be rampant. Okay, so we're kind of going... I agree. Look, I agree with all this stuff. Uh, in terms of what the devs have said, they haven't talked much about this. I get where you get all this from. Uh, you know, obviously, there's other games, but like one that comes to mind is Crusader Kings. And they have all these in-depth kind of like things that you can do, like bribes and kind of, you know, change people's minds and assassinate. So I'm pretty sure a lot of the, these ideas are going to come from that, but I do get the significance. Then we have increased influence and clan rank from engaging politi uh, political intrigue should be able to spend influence on getting other lords to vote on certain issues. We currently have that, um, not in this way, but... If after you do uh, a siege, if you choose devastate or show mercy, you're going to be brought up. If you actually read the description, it says pay this much influence to convince 
you know, this amount of lords to actually let this happen. Which again is not what you're talking about. It's a very basic uh, concept of it, but that's kind of like the only thing that kind of runs, reminds me of. Um, then we have bonus to tactics against parties of non-imperial culture, more senate-like voting system. Your initial goal should be to reconcile this, uh, what is that? What is, well, I don't know what that word is. But this does remind me of those, uh, what's it called, cultural bonuses that I did. And for the empire factions, I did state that they should, uh, what's it called, benefit from policies more because they were they were indeed more political. So they should like, you know, have in a way better policies or should be able to pass policies for a lot less influence and stuff of that nature. You know what I mean? When I made that, um, what do you call it? Those cultural bonuses uh, kind of like list for each uh, kingdom. I kind of made a play with what the game has currently and how it could kind of, you know, form in with like pretty much, you know, just like, how can I explain it? You wouldn't have to add too much stuff on top to make the stuff that I had kind of work with the current game, right? Um, well, I, while I would like all of this stuff, right? And a lot of people, obviously, you read this and you're like, yes, this is it. We're probably not going to get that much of an in-depth system, I'll be honest with you. But I would like it. All right, moving on to Vlandians. Uh, so we got clans should be more, uh, very independent. Clans should be able to take out mercenary work with other kingdoms. In keeping with their historic tradition, as long as they answer the call when the king goes to war. Uh, renown and influence gain increases for winning tournaments and mercenary work. Lords can challenge other lords to single combat to improve their standing. Okay. Spar with local champions and villages to improve recruiting. Okay. We are actually getting, um, if you guys didn't know, we are actually getting um, kind of like units that are meant to just be arena champions. Uh soon i don't know exactly when but the devs have teased it then we have extra companion slots to function as an honor guard can demand fiefs and payment for mercenary work initial goal is to win uh tourneys and get rich through the wars of others okay so it look kind of like a mercenary play style okay i guess i don't got much to say about this this sounds this sounds this sounds doable you know, more companion slots, okay. Um, more renown and influence gains, okay. And mercenary work, okay. That kind of plays with what, what he said over here that he didn't want to do. That would just, you know, a couple of numerical bonuses, but I get where he's coming from. This this is, can definitely be possible. They have Batanians. We have travel to the Batanian Forest. Should be dangerous for other factions. Hill forts spawn akin to bandit hideouts where Britannian lords can rest and send troops out to conduct guerrilla warfare. This will be very highly OP, but uh, springing up out of the woods to harass enemy parties and inflict damage before retreating back to the woods. This will kind of be very overpowered. Um, what I did suggest was that Britannians should have uh, a bonus in the forest. They, they It shouldn't just be a reduction to how because if you travel in the forest on a campaign map, it's very, very slow. It's a very big reduction. Batanians have a less of a reduction. But what I suggested was Batanians should actually be faster. There should be no reduction for it. And while, while that might sound very OP, I also gave all the other um, kingdoms very you know strong, uh, what do you call it, bonuses as well. And with this, all this being said, I am going to link that video down below too. If you guys want to go check it out and see what my ideas were. Because I am uh, referencing it a lot. All right, clans should be more independent and renowned influence gains should come from guerrilla attacks and raids, ability to conduct night raids against enemy camps and settlements, stealing supplies, sabotaging siege engines, and inflicting casualties. I put this for Sturgeons. Yeah, I, I literally put this for Sturgeons, not guerrilla attacks, but raids in general. Then we have Batania should have uh, expanded disguise options for generally causing mayhem under the guise of another faction's party. So the assassin tier, we got the politic, political, we have the mercenary, we can call him the brute, and then we have the assassin. Okay, okay, okay. I'm guessing we're going to get the warrior type over here. So for Sturgeons, you have summon economies should be boom and bust, rising and falling like the tides. Villages can have rushes where resources and troops are greatly expanded. You know, uh, Sturgeons, like Vikings and stuff, and uh, just overall, you know, northern uh civilizations 
they're like portrayed as like these uh well like a lot of people know about this now but like they before pe like movies and stuff portrayed them as like these kind of very very strong um people but not very intelligent do you know what i'm trying to say but i guess that's because you know um history books and stuff were written you know by different but they were also written by the northern oh what's it called i don't know what i'm trying to get with this but what i'm trying to say is there are they are actually very very good at you know farming and just you know agriculture and stuff like that so and obviously you know um i don't know would that be considered architecture like boat building because they had some good ass boats man that shit was real they had some good ass boats but i don't know um that's not architecture i guess boat building what would you put that under i don't know but uh let's keep it going uh sturgeon lords should gather trade goods like fur while traveling through their lands as well as other opportunity to forage for food and more luc lucrative de lucrative goods uh infighting among sturgeon lords to increase their standing within the kingdom should be commonplace increase renown and influence gained from trading in battle the Sturgeon winter should be a huge roadblock for non-Sturgeon troops, allowing Sturgeon lords to starve and outlast enemy parties during the winter months. So what I stated for the Sturgeons, um, since they live kind of like, you know, I, I say that there should be a cold factor in the game. And here's how it works. So it's not too expansive, and I think it can be done. But I think the Sturgeons, um, okay, well, first, the, the cold decay kind of like of health that I system that I wanted included you having um, wood or you can make another um, item in the game called firewood which you can take like um, regular wood and just break it down using the smithing uh, what do you call it like the smithy right at the town you break it down into firewood and with that firewood you have to carry it in your inventory if you're gonna travel through snow land and uh, it would slowly go down same way as your food goes down uh, whenever it's cold and if you're out of firewood, your uh, your units are going to slowly start getting wounded, and then they're going to desert if they get too cold, if they start freezing, and they're going to start dying. And uh, same goes for you. I think that would have been a good thing to add. And the Sturgeons, their bonus would be pretty much they don't have to use as much wood. They know how to survive in the cold and stuff of that nature, right? But I do agree with this that, you know, the winter and just like they should use snow to their advantage in a way. All right, then we have Azurai, a faction of financial warfare, increased workshop slash caravan limits, influence and renown, gain heavily influenced by workshop and caravan income. The clan with the highest workshop slash caravan income rules the Azurai. Interesting. Wage financial warfare by raiding other caravans, using influence and money to manipulate markets in towns and villages. Okay, ability to unlock loan sharking quests through powerful gang leaders that you can use your money to finance other lords and merchants to use their debts to manipulate them into wars or other situations to your benefits. Use financial warfare to plant seeds of uprising in other settlements. Listen, dog, I'm going to be... Listen, I love all the ideas. Don't get this completely twisted. I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I feel like I have to do this in every video. A lot of this stuff is not going to get added, unfortunately. Um, it's very good, don't get me wrong, and I think oh, it's going to make us very good mods right but um yeah unfortunately i think crusader kings has nailed a lot of the stuff that you are talking about and unfortunately it probably will not be in banner lord you know what i mean don't get it wrong i think these are great ideas i had very similar ideas in the past but i'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys you know what i mean it is what it is but all right, so they're kind of more like the money, uh, money based. Okay, they have Kazates. Most Kazate settlements should revert to imperial culture and function by paying wealthy tribute to the Kazate lords. Kazate troops are recruited from nomadic parties on the map as mobile villages. That's wild. <laughs> That'd be a wild concept. See, like this stuff sounds good, but just like from a coding standpoint and developer standpoint, and from like you know the people who make the choices you know, for, for what the developers can and cannot do, you know, if they were to come with an idea of like, hey, can this, can the Kazates have mobile villages? I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. They're gonna immediately say no and be like, that's way too much, you know, in terms of, in terms of like, that's way too much development. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of focus on the Kazates and not a lot of focus on all the other kingdoms. And while, and while I understand your point that, you know, that shouldn't be the point, 
I'm just saying from a, um, a, a person who makes the decisions, you know, developers bring decisions to that decision maker and he makes a decision of yes or no, should this be added? And if it sounds too, um, what's the word, I guess radical, if it sounds a little bit too out of place or not out of place, but how can I say this? It sounds like if it got added, there were a lot of stuff might break or there might be a lot of problems. They're probably not going to choose it. That's why I try to gear my suggestions towards stuff that would kind of, you know, be kind of easier to uh, integrate and also made, you know, as much sense as possible. While I do agree this would be kind of cool, very cool feature. Again, trying to be not trying to be the uh, bearer of bad news. It probably won't be added. But cool feature. I do agree. Ability to force summons and villages to pay tribute to you. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, that can probably be done, but I don't know if it will. If, you're, if, you're, if your reputation is enough to be feared, the summons will pay the tribute routinely with no battle required. Simply visit the summons to reap your rewards. Payment can be goods, gold, or troops. Okay. Ability to raid and force tribute outside of war at the risk of losing relationship with the Kazate lords who favor the current con while gaining relationship with those who do not. Okay, increased renounce such influence gain from selling loot and ransoming lords from raids and collecting tribute from your settlements. I, again, I actually put this for um, this very similar idea of uh, ransoming prisoners and stuff like that to the Sturgeons. Um, and kind of like you would gain a lot more renown and a lot more reputation from your fellow lords if you were, you know what I mean? A very good like raider and stuff like that. But this can work with the Kazates as well. And, he's, and he ends, uh, just a few ideas I had while reading through the lore. Hopefully it sparks some ideas and discussions to make the sandbox have a little more variety. Again, all these ideas, good. I agree with them. Um, again, being honest, most of them probably won't see it in the game. Probably for stability reasons. Probably for, um, you know, it being... Because some of these, like, it might sound like, oh, it's an easy thing to do. But it, it's going to take a lot of manpower, a lot of work, and... Uh, you know, like I said, the people at the top who make the decisions might might just exit out, like exit out, and just be like, you know what, we gotta focus on this, this, and that. It's uh, it sucks. I do not like that that's happening, but it is what it is, and I'm gonna try to keep it honest with you guys. But uh, good ideas for sure. These states, uh, they should have different uh, mechanics. Yeah, they, there there should be a lot of different mechanics, but unfortunately. Not all of them are probably going to make it. Give me feast. I think those are going to come eventually. I'll be honest with you. I see no reason why they should not come in the, uh, in the future. Yeah, a lot of people will agree. Alrighty, let me know what you guys think. Ask me any questions, any concerns, and like always, stay safe.